All right, we're going to talk about tips for an effective logo design. We're going to talk about the five principles of effective, what makes up an effective logo design. So what makes a logo work? There are five principles that we should be kind of using as a checklist of sorts as you go forward with your logo concepts and creations. Um, these five principles will definitely, once you do check this off the list of your logo, um, you, you don't, utilizing these principles will definitely be um, make your logo more uh, meaningful, more effective. So the five principles of effective logo design are keeping it simple, memorable, timeless, versatile, and appropriate. And as you go through this process, you are also going through, just like any design process, you're gonna go through the logo process. So you're gonna have a design brief given to you, whether it be a student project that you're working on, you're given the project details. Whether you're sitting down with a client, they're giving you specifics, um, or you're you know, asking for specifics, that's gathered information. And then you're going about your research. You're gathering more information about not only the brand or the logo itself, <clears throat> but also about the um, competitors, about the target audience. And then you're going into your uh, brainstorming stage and then into your reflection and then implementing your design changes and then present, presenting your design designs. Now this looks like a linear process as you see on this um, slide. However, the design process is not linear. It's, it's there for you to take those steps, but everybody does them differently. You might bounce back to the first step. You might start at a different step. So it's, it's very subjective, but as long as you're going through those steps, um, you are allowing yourself that process to come up with more meaningful um, ideas. Um, and as we go forward, I'm just gonna talk a little bit more about the design brief and then we'll go back into um, what makes an effective logo. So you're gathering information, you're getting the design brief um, about the logo itself, about the brand. You might conduct a questionnaire or an inter interview with a client to get the design brief going. The project summary can be part of that. Who the target audience is. What are the goals? What's the tone and guidelines? What are the requirements? Communication plan, the schedule, and if there's any sponsors or stakeholders, you know, this should all be a part of your design brief. And the design brief doesn't have to be something that is, you know, super detailed and substantial, but this should be definitely something that you should, um, you know, have at least on one or two pages so that you are on the same page as your clients and getting the proper information. You want to be on the same page. So you're, when you're sitting down with a client, you want to make sure everything is, you know, everybody's on the same page. Then you go into your research. You conduct research focused on the industry itself, on its history and on its competitors. You know, if it's not a startup company, if it's an already established company that say is having a redesign of their logo, research, you know, about the brand. What has been working for them in regards to the logo? What needs to be changed? What's evolving? You know, what, what issue, what problem is out there that you need to um, make note of whenever you're redesigning the logo? Then you go into reference. This is conduct research into logo designs that have been successful in current styles and trends that may be related to the design brief, you know, doing some, some research into that. Um, then the fun starts. You go into the logo design process, you know, you start sketching, you know, this can be very loose at first. You can see on this um, example here, very loose sketches. Uh, this is for you. This isn't for the client per se at this point for you to get out some, some um, interesting concepts that may be hindered uh, if you go straight to the computer. You know, some of the tools can be very hindering if you're not aware of the software at first, or you know, if you go straight to the computer, you might not be thinking you know, in terms of other concepts that, that you could do so you know, in a free form way. So developing uh, the logo design concepts around the brief and the research right now is, is a great um, step into 
getting uh, a, a meaningful and a, a great concept going forward. And then you can um, refine your, your sketches as you go forward. They can be a little bit more refined. And then you can get some collaboration on that as well. You can ask somebody nearby. If you're working in a team, you can ask some uh, feedback and uh, get some ideas as well. Then you go into the design stage. And this is where you explore different typefaces, colors, work out the design to find the best solution for the project, and try different versions. This is a part of the process, you know. Once you kind of get an idea of maybe fonts that align with the brand and all your research, the colors, you might kind of play around with two or three fonts, uh, two or three colors, two or three orientations. Um, there's, you know, many instances where I have uh, designed, you know, I don't know, 30 logos and honed in on, you know, 10 at that point. Um, and, you know, it's kind of the, the process that we go through. And what my recommendation too, when you do sit down with a client is not to show them all of these different variations. This is kind of the beginning of the process. This confuses clients sometimes when they see this and might cause more work for you in the long run. So I always find it best if you kind of work through this process as much as you can to hone it down, get feedback from other people, um, you know, not the client per se, but maybe other creatives or, you know, people that you know and trust, and then hone in on say like 10 from here and then go down to three before you actually show the client. So three is a good reasonable number um, to show a client once you kind of get more into the stronger concepts. So again, getting feedback from your peers, from colleagues and coworkers, if you're working in a team, this is a great way to kind of get some, some constructive criticism and, you know, kind of get a, a new look at uh, what can be changed, what needs to be revised, what's working, what's not working, um, sort of playing around with maybe a different idea. You might even at this point find you might go back to the first step of your process you need to. So, you know, like I said, the process is, uh, it's not linear. You can um, definitely bounce back and forth depending upon uh, the, you know, where you're at in the process and what's going on at the, at the time with the logo. Once you get it down to, I would say at least three, you present it to your clients. Only the best is recommended, like we said, um, like I uh, noted before, you can show three different variations. That usually tends to be a good number to stick with. That way you're not overwhelming the client and then also not adding more work on your plate in, in, the, in the long run. And then application. So take the next steps to establish the identity, work the details involved with its application to re remain consistent, and establish a standards manual or booklet if necessary. You know, if the client has a budget for that, that might be a great way to add more, um, you know, work for you and <laughs> uh, added uh, jobs, but um, also for them to establish a consistency with their logo. It's kind of a book of standard standards manual once the logo is designed. It's pretty much telling anyone who else, else that is involved in placing the logo on any type of identity, um, on any type of application, this is how you need to, to, to show it or else you know, the brand recognition will not be there, won't be correct. So that's always a great way to, um, to, to gain more work as a designer, but also keep the logo consistent if your client has the budget to do so. So the design process as stated, and this is kind of showing you a step-by-step -step very uh, generally, this is um, just my kind of sketches here. So phase one is the overview. This would either be something you would be jotting down in a meeting with a client, an overview, uh, just jotting down notes, objectives, outcomes, who the target audience is. Uh, this can also be handed to you by the client, and then you kind of fill in the rest, or it could be a student project, and these are the specifics of the project. Um, so here I'm touching upon target audience, outcomes, deliverables. And this is just handwritten. You can have this um, handwritten at first if you're meeting with a client, you can have it typed out as well in the end, um, just to make it look more uh, professional. Okay, design uh, ideas, or I'm sorry, phase three is, no, um, this is kind of where your brainstorming starts. And I always like to start my brainstorming with any type of design process, even the logo design particularly, 
um, with an adjective list. I think this works really well for me. Um, everybody's different. You might do a mind map, you might do collaboration, you might um, step outside and go for a walk. You know, that kind of opens up some ideas too when you're so focused on something. But um, the adjective list is, for me, works really well in the beginning because it allows me to start thinking about things that it may not have come into my mind in regards to uh, the, the concept at hand. So if you're working on, say, this is me kind of looking at my uh, last name as a design studio, I'm trying to come up with a word list for my own logo um, for a design studio. I'm, I'm jotting down some keywords that emulate who I want, what I want to perceive as, as my studio. And these words um, are coming through as adjectives. And um, I always tend, sometimes I get into a word block where I can't think of any you know, more adjectives. So I go into the thesaurus and actually look up that adjective to find more adjectives. And then I highlight ones that I think are the most powerful. And these adjectives can be used once you're done, you highlight the best ones that you think you know, show what the brand's about or what the concept you want to portray uh, visually. Um, then you look up colors that align with those adjectives. You look up fonts that align with those adjectives. The style, everything. So that kind of works really well for me. Um, this might definitely work well for you. So try it, you know, even if it's a 10 word list, adjective word list, that's, that's enough um, to get you started. Phase four is design sketches and thumbnails. This is a great way, again, like we said before, start your thumbnails. Um, these can be loose at first and then hone in on maybe some ideas that you want to go uh, more refined with. So um, this is kind of me looking at some marks for my uh, own design studio. And then you can kind of, again, get some, get some feedback uh, from people that you know, maybe not so much the client, they shouldn't be privy of this step, um, unless, you know, they want to be, but, um, you know, again, you don't want to overwhelm them either. Sometimes they think this is what it's going to look like and then they get upset. So um, we know that this isn't what it's going to look like. We know that this is the beginning stages. So it's good for us to kind of keep this part hidden on our part. But this is the beauty behind what we do. This is the story. This is kind of how we come up with the, the concepts. And then what we want to do is produce it, make it on the computer, you know, obviously create on the computer in uh, Illustrator as a raster um, vector based file, um, and then trying it out, uh, print it out in different sizes, um, try different backgrounds, you know, try a black background, white background, test it out and see if it works. Implementation is basically um, launching it. So if it needs to be printed, you are uh, having it ready for print, getting it ready for print. Um, if you're, you are um, putting it on the web, you know, you'll, get, you'll be getting that ready to launch as well in a different way, you know, obviously a different file format and color variation. All right, we will be looking at common logo mistakes next.